Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this little video that I'm making on how to restore this pen, which is a Waterman 52.5V. I mean, this video is pretty applicable to any lever filler, um, especially ones with pressure bars instead of J-bars, but anyways, it, <laughs> this is just a quick video on how I repair them. Uh, it's pretty fun, and I just wanted to sort of share the way that I do it. So, yeah, let's get right into it. So there are a few things you're going to need and a few things that are going to help. First of all, things you need. Sack shellac. This is going to attach the sack to the section. And then 100% talc. Not baby powder. It doesn't have any perfume or anything in it. That's going to help the sack slide into the pen. Of course, you're going to need your pen. And then the actual sack where this is what's going to hold the ink. If you're just repairing one pen, you can probably look up what size sack you need. This is the specific size for the 52.5V. Or if you have a bunch of sacks lying around, you can test which ones fit. But if you're just doing one pen, you can probably look it up. Then some dental tools just for scraping off any old bits of shellac or sack or anything like that. And then some little grabby forceps. And then this is a pressure bar. This is what was used for pens with this specific uh, lever filling system. I don't think we're going to need it here though because I don't really break that often, but just in case. And then of course a, a gripper if your fingers aren't doing the trick. And for this I'm going to use this, <laughs> it's been used a lot, this metal polishing cloth because the nib is a little, not worse for wear, but just a little tarnished. Uh, or it's got some stuff on it. And then this is a heat gun. Now, if you listen to some people that do repairs a lot, they're going to tell you to never, ever, 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 ever use a heat gun. And I can kind of see where they're coming from because you can really do a lot of damage with this if you aren't even paying attention for a few seconds. But I find it is honestly really helpful because, um, as Waski Squirrel says, the first rule of pen repair is do no harm. And honestly, I think you can do a lot more harm trying to yank out a grip section of a pen that's cold rather than one that's been at least slightly warmed up. Like, I don't, you don't have to get to the melting point of shellac. And the melting point of shellac is below that of celluloid, just barely. But even just to warm it up a bit, just to make it not so prevalent to cracking when you're opening it up, I think it's pretty valuable. Of course, you could always use section pliers too, but some people say never use those either. But uh, the main rule for this is patience is a virtue. Uh, Richard Bender, who's basically the number one authority on... on fountain pen repair as far as I'm concerned, uh, put out a piece a few days ago saying that patience is one of the main tools you need when repairing vintage pens. I'll try to link that article that he wrote in the description because all of his stuff is super, super helpful. Absolutely, he's right and he's the guy to listen to. And when he says patience is a virtue, you know, he knows what he's talking about. So anyways, now with all of our supplies laid out, Let's actually get into the repairs. So, first up, here's the pen. Uh, as you can see, hopefully you can see that. I don't know if it's focusing or not. But the nib is a little dirty. It's probably got some ink on it. There's ink on the section too. But if it can come out without any heat, that would be nice. But it's not. It doesn't seem like it wants to budge. I'm not going to force it too much. But now we'll use some heat. It's already really hot in here, so hopefully it won't get too insane, but let's see if we can warm things up a little bit. Ah, there you go. So you see, sometimes dangerous tools do come in handy if you're a little careful. But as we remove that, we can see there's some dried up sack there. I should probably put a paper towel down so I don't get a bunch of sack on my table like I just did there. So yeah, I'm sorry if anyone got mad at me using both of those 
tools for some people they're kind of cursed but you know I'm just doing this for myself and I'm not working on anyone else's pens um, but yeah they work for me and as long as I'm super patient with them I haven't really had any issues so anyways now you've got your section out of your body so how do you get the old sack out of here well for this one it seems like it's pretty easy kind of shake it and the sack sort of comes out and then this is what I was talking about the little scraper you can use on this part right here so if I can scrape it off it's really stuck on there huh, there's actually some inside the uh, attached next to the feed there good thing we got those out um, trying to sort of find an entry point where the sack doesn't quite get to the lip where the section goes up and that's my point of attack now this is really on there I'll try and get this more for a bit and then I'll be back with it okay now I've managed to scatter pieces <laughs> of sack all over my desk but I gave the section a little wash and I've got most of the sack off but not all of it and you can see that nib starting to clear up definitely a lot of dried up ink in there coming out we'll wash it more thoroughly in a second there's probably really no need to polish this nib anyway um, there's a little more sack to get up at the edge Okay, now that's now that's a little better. Not perfect, but I don't want to damage the pen, so we will deal with that. Now the sack's out of the pen. Now we should check if the sack is out of here as well. Um, normally I do that with my phone, but it's filming right now, so let's see if we can see. No, not really, but. Let's see if we can change the angle. So if we look into the pen, you can see it's just a lot of like dust and rust in there, but really no spits of sack left that I can see at least. Um, let me know if you see anything else, but it's kind of hard to get it to focus all the way down the barrel. But that's a pretty cool view. Yeah, you can see there's just some particulate in there really. Built up gunk over the years, but nothing too crazy that I can see let's stick a q-tip in there and see if there's anything left but we should be good to clean out the section um, resack the pen I wish I could give you guys some more close-up shots of this but I really not only do, I don't have another camera and I don't really have uh, any way to angle my camera other than this right now my phone's hanging off of a Oh, I feel something in there. There's a little sack in there. Oh, there's probably just the end in there. Anyways, um, I don't... Oh, you can hear that. Hopefully you can. You can. I certainly can. Um, yeah, I wish I had like different camera angles and stuff like that, or like a tripod. But, I don't have anything like that yet. <laughs> Maybe I could... Oh, there's a little more in there. Maybe I could create, I don't know, some sort of like Patreon or something, but I don't think I'm nearly big enough for that yet. Anyways, I stuck a q-tip all the way down in there, got some of that old dust out, and yeah, doesn't seem to be anything left in there. So let's see if this mechanism is working, and if it is, then we're going to be ready to clean out and resack the pen. So let's see if I can do this with one hand, because I'm holding the phone with the other, but you can see as I move the lever, it moves that pressure bar. The pressure bar seems to be in okay condition. Uh, it looks a little worse for wear, but it should work just fine. There's really no need, I think, to replace it. Because I'm just using this for myself, and if it screws something up, I can always just fix it then. But, yeah. Now that we know that this is working just fine, let's clean out the pen and, yeah, flush it a little bit and get it ready for resacking. Now, if we were sort of proper in our repair techniques, um, maybe we could knock the nib and feet out with a knockout block, which I do have, but it's sort of a last resort for me. And I think other people also view it as a bit extreme because it's perfectly it's fine in the pen right now. 
It's probably how they installed it, and there's really no reason to knock the feed and nib out of this pen. It's not like most modern pens where you can just pull it out. I mean, I suppose you could try, but it's really in there. And you gotta put it in like a little hole. Uh, I have one over there, but yeah, you, you like put the little die in or whatever and then hammer it out. Here, you put it in something like this, where you find the right hole where the nib goes through, but not the actual uh, section. And then you put like a metal rod in there and hammer it through. But we're not gonna do that today because it's kind of unnecessary and a little too uh, potentially destructive. So let's clean out this pen, give it a little flush. Okay, now that the section the feet is mostly cleaned out. <laughs> There's still some left of rank in there, but anyways, now we gotta fit the sack to this, I guess, yeah, there's just the end of the section right here. And first of all, we need to cut the sack to size. So we put the sack in the pen, and you see it, it goes down that far. So it's about that long, and then the section is gonna go in this deep. So you see the pen's gonna be put together like that, and you want the sack to come up to right here, and be as long as feasible so you can fit the most ink, but not be so too long as to squish down in the barrel. So what you need to do is, well, cut it down to size. And so we know it's about that long. And it reached about there. And now you can, it doesn't matter if you cut it a little too much, but we're gonna cut it out there. Just a quick snip, and that's gonna be about perfectly long. Now you could probably cram a bigger sack into here, but this is what's recommended for this pen, at least if my research is correct. So, what you wanna do is first, this, this specific sack is already somewhat coated with talc, but a little extra doesn't hurt. So you can take your 100% talc, and a lot of these supplies are available from many locations. And there's lots of places you can buy them online, but you can just spread a little bit on the sack. I don't know if it's proper to do this with my finger or not, but I did just wash my hands and dry them fully. So I don't think it's too terrible that I'm doing this. But that's mostly spread on the sack now. So now we go on to the second step of putting the sack on. I'll get the talc off of the pen. So what we want to do is put the shellac on the section where you affix the sack and then spread the sack on and up to where it can sit. So this is clear shellac. Um, I think it's also for like demonstrators and stuff like that. But you can use normal shellac. This is kind of just what I have on hand. You place it around where you're going to be putting on the sack. Not too much, but also not a tiny amount. Then you grab the sack. I do kind of use these as sack spreaders if it works. You can also use your fingers. And you just kinda help it on like that. And you're on. Now just push it up to where it needs to be. And there you go. Now your sack is attached. And now what you need to do is just set it down and that all-important uh, tool <laughs> in pen repair, you just gotta wait. So I guess we'll put the rest of this stuff away. I don't think I'm gonna polish the nib. Uh, I think it's perfect as it is right now. And it's fine just to leave everything a little aged, you know? It shows, I mean, these, <laughs> this pen's over 100 years old, and it's okay if it doesn't look like it just came out of the factory. Or at least if you ask me, that's what I think. It won't take too long to set, but you don't wanna 
really put it in before it does set. But we're going to put some shellac around the other part of that section and stick it in. Now, if you don't want to put shellac and just kind of friction fit it in, that's also fine. Um, frankly, I think I could go with that first and see how it works, but sometimes it can like s spin around or jostle around in the uh, body, so it's really up to you. Again, there's a lot of stuff where it's sort of up to your taste or discretion, but this is how I'm doing it. So we'll wait for the shellac to dry, and then we'll put the section in the body. Okay, now the shellac has dried pretty well and good, so we can try and fit this back in. And we'll see, it was holding pretty good without the uh, uh, shellac on uh, the section part right there, so if we put it in like that, gets it pretty snug. Um, yeah, I'm pretty okay with that. I personally like to line it with a nib with the uh, lever, but it's purely up to taste. You can, well, you can do whatever you want. This one example is pretty good for a 52 and a half V. The imprint's very clear. The chasing is pretty clear as well. The hard rubber hasn't aged a bit. Um, this might have been plated. Maybe the plating is worn off. But other than that, it's in very good condition. So now I guess the only thing left to do is get writing with this pen. So I'll be inking this up with uh, Diamine Aurora Borealis. That's the uh, Reddit uh, made ink, I believe. But anyways, most Diamine inks are good for vintage pens besides the, the sheeners and the shimmerers. And this isn't really either of those. So let's ink it up. So we put it in the ink. Operate the lever, you can hear those bubbles, hopefully. <laughs> and now it should have good enough ink. That's one of the things about lever fillers. It's pretty easy to get the best possible fill. Now the best possible fill isn't an entirely full sack, but it's pretty quick and easy to refill, at least compared to most other vintage fillers. Now that doesn't mean that lever fillers are perfect or they don't have their own issues, but that is of course, <laughs> you know, one of their upsides. So anyways, let's get to running with this pen. I'm going to be careful about posting it so that I don't stress the hard rubber too much. Now this is a Waterman's 52.5V. Now this is a really fine nib. It's pretty scratchy as well. Uh, the tipping is on there. That is, sometimes tipping falls off on vintage pens. But I guess it's just kind of scratchy. Maybe I'll smooth it out at one point. The ink is diamine. <laughs> That's how you spell diamine. Aurora Borealis. Now, of course, what you're probably here to see is the flex. And that's pretty good. Um, I'm not pushing it too hard. You can see it's already kind of stressing the feed. Either way, yeah, there's really no point in stressing this nib too much. But you can see, even with not too much pressure, it's got a pretty good amount of flex. It's more of a semi-flex nib at best. But let's try. Because it's so fine, it really does highlight that line variation pretty well. But you can see it's it's working great. It filled up just fine. And now the ink is uh, flowing just fine as well. There was that little bit of, you know, stuck, broken up old sack bits next to the feed. Uh, I tried to clean it out as best as I could. So <laughs> it's good to see that it's working fine. But yeah. Like all Waterman's of this era, it's it's a lovely, lovely nib to write with. It's just super expressive, bouncy. It's it's just a lot of fun. So yeah. Hopefully that was a educational insight into how you can restore pens like this. Uh, these are pretty simple. I think if you got the tools necessary, which 
it's a little bit of an investment, but if you restore even just two or three of these, it's more worth it than, you know, getting it sent out. And I mean, professionals are professionals for a reason, but I think it's just fun to restore pens like this. So, with that being said, I hope this has been of some use to you, or at least some entertainment value. Uh, but yeah, this was a lot of fun to restore this pen. It's a great pen, and... I'm glad I can use it as it was intended. So, with that in mind, thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, feel free to leave a like. And if you want to see more stuff in the future, then, uh, yeah, if you want to subscribe, feel free to do that as well. But, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.